Hello everyone and welcome. Today is September 23rd, 2018 and this is my braces vlog number 8 which is actually supposed to be my reveal as well as an overview of my entire orthodontic journey. Um, so I guess where do I begin? Um, updates. My viewers. I owed you guys an update way back in January when I actually had my braces removed and I want to apologize again for taking so damn long in posting this video. Um, life gets really busy, my company went through a massive reorganization, a lot of people lost their jobs, um, you know, my house was falling apart, my kids were in school and my wife was actually also going through her orthodontic treatment and she was actually preparing for her orthognathic surgery which um, she basically needed to, like her jaw alignment was so bad that she actually had to get double jaw surgery and braces to correct her bite. And so trying to be the supportive spouse that I am, there was a whole bunch of things going on and that's why I never bothered putting up an update. But I'm here now and I'm going to tell you guys what it's like to not have braces. It feels really cool for one, your teeth are nice and smooth. No more bumps and lumps and wires for, you know, things to get stuck in or to catch on your inside cheek and your lips. You don't get sores anymore. You don't have to be self-conscious that something's dangling out of your mouth um, when you're speaking. And of course, um, you know, just not having braces in general doesn't make you look like you're in, in high school anymore. Um, it's a little bit bittersweet, of course, right? Because for those that have known me for a long time and for those that have been following this blog, I've actually had braces for a long freaking time. Um, this is my third time having braces as a full-grown adult. I started out in my early 20s and I finally finished this third time in my ultra late 30s going into my early 40s. So I basically in that near 20-year window, we'll say 18-year window, I've had braces for a combined total wear time of seven years, which is nothing short of crazy and not the fault of my orthodontist. Um, it's just the way my jaw was. Um, give you a quick overview. Um, I had braces in my early 20s to correct crooked teeth and jaw pain. Crooked teeth I didn't personally care about. All my friends had braces in high school. I was in university, big deal, right? Because um, lots of folks in college have it as well. And... My jaw and my bite was so bad that they thought they had to wear braces and then get double jaws or jaw surgery of some sort to correct things. Um, and of course, when I found out how much it was going to cost to do the surgery, you know, somewhere in the order of like seven or eight thousand dollars plus seven thousand dollars for braces, that with all due respect, a young then twenty year old me didn't even have money to buy a car, let alone spend twenty thousand dollars on their mouth. And so. Um, I chickened out, I begged my orthodontist not to do jaw surgery, and so he had to work with what he had, which was nothing other than braces to try to fix my bite, which he did for the most part. Um, thing that really sucked about it then was first time round, it was two years of treatment, then I got them removed, only to find out four months later that my braces or my teeth had moved around a whole bunch again, despite wearing a retainer, and so braces had to go back on. And so then that second round became a three-year endeavor, and then it finally came off. I got um, a retainer, like a, a double removable retainer. It's called an Essex retainer, which is essentially an Invisalign brace for the top and the bottom that I had to wear permanently forever to keep things in place, and everything was fine and dandy. I suffered from an open bite where the teeth didn't come together. They were kind of like that, and from the side view, I had a slight underbite. And that's what was corrected years and years and years ago. Fast forward to 2016, right? I complain of jaw pain. My teeth are straight, but I've noticed that I don't have an overbite anymore. It was reverted back to this pseudo straight open bite. And that was a result of not having jaw surgery and not wearing a retainer. Um, and so that was my own fault. That's what happens when you get married, you have children, life gets busy. And then you think, well, why do I have to keep wearing this? I've been wearing a retainer forever and nothing's ever shifted. Well, Duh, that's why it's called a retainer. So my bad, things moved around, got wicked headaches, and it sucked really bad. And the orthodontist suggested that I get braces again, pay for them in full again, right? And go through the entire ordeal again, like I did when I was in my 20s. And so great, you know, braces truly have been part of my identity, right? Looking back at old photos, my work ID photo, my 
my my work photo now right in my outlook profile my college graduation picture all my family photos and even some wedding pictures i was in i've always had braces the only time i never had braces was when i actually got married thank goodness but the point here is that they've been part of me they are part of my identity and the joke is in the orthodontic office now is that if i have to go for a fourth round in my late 40s i'm not even going to bother going back to have them removed because what's the damn point i'm just going to need them again 10 years from then <laughs> so as all joking aside um i you know still have my own host of mouth related problems i don't necessarily have TMJ issues that give me headaches anymore. My jaw still continues to click, but my bite at least is perfect. And in fact, my orthodontist actually deliberately overcorrected my bite so that I have more of an overbite than normal because he knew what my jaw and tooth behavior was like. And so thank goodness for that. Um, I was really hoping that I could get a double Essex retainer again so I could take it out, floss easily, and then just throw them back in before bedtime. But the problem is, is that I suffer from wicked, wicked bad gum recession. Now, for those that don't know what gum recession is, is the gum flesh is basically pulling back and shrinking and thinning out. Sort of like thinning hair like this, uh, but inside my mouth. And so that exposes my tooth roots. And you can see that right here. You can see all the roots of my molar. And even on this front tooth where it's really bad. Right there, you can see the root clear as daylight. And... When that happens, you are exposing your teeth to more erosion because as you brush, the roots are softer than the rest of the teeth and you're wearing your roots out. It's like chopping a tree down very slowly. Um, and you're more prone to cavities and you're more prone to you know periodontal diseases because of that. And so the only way to solve it is to do gum graft surgery where they cut a bunch of meat and flesh off the roof of your own mouth or from a cadaver, like a dead person, and they stitch it onto your existing teeth um, where your gums meet with your teeth and then hope to God that everything just kind of grows back and covers up those roots um, with thicker gum tissue. And so because I needed all those gum grafts, I wasn't allowed to get that retainer that I wanted. So what my orthodontist did was he took a wire and glued it to the back of my top four teeth, so right here, and then to the bottom of my lower six down there. So even though I got my braces removed and you don't see anything in the front, I'm kind of wearing braces on the back of my teeth now to a lesser extent. Um, brushing is obviously easier. Food doesn't get caught the same way as it did with braces because the little lumps of glue in the wire are smooth. Um, but the flossing still requires me to have a floss threader just like when I had braces to get in between the teeth and below the gum line to clean everything. So unfortunately, I have to stick with this routine for the rest of my life. Good in the sense that my teeth are being retained 24 7 365 um, bad that it's just more of a pain to clean um, as far as gum grafts are concerned um, interestingly enough I actually had two gum graft procedures done before I got braces and then right after I had my braces removed in January I had a gum graft procedure done in the spring and I think I need to do another three or four procedures to really bring you know the thickness of my gums back up to where they need to be a multi-year long drawn out process which is not pleasant um, it's so bad actually that I actually require anesthetic not local but kind of a twilight anesthetic if you will a hypnotic drug to put me out because it's just so painful and nerve-wracking for me to do it um, and the last one was really bad like my face was all swollen a big egg-sized lump out of my face and then you know, finally the cyst ruptured and it was ooze and pus. It was disgusting. It was the worst thing I've ever seen and the most painful thing I've gone through in a long time. Anyways, so that's why I have glued retainers, not removable ones. Um, as far as the removal process was concerned, it was pretty straightforward. It was a bittersweet day, of course. Um, great uh, getting my braces off. Bad because, well, braces is what I is my identity. It's, it was weird. Um, but... I tried to ask my orthodontist to salvage what he could so I could show you guys what my braces look like. Ceramic ones didn't survive the removal. They are like basically glass. So when you break them, they shatter like glass and they fly everywhere throughout the office. And then I'm not going to go and try to hunt every little bit down. Um, but I was lucky enough to actually have the bottom braces removed um, and have it all retained on the wire. And metal braces, by the way, are actually easier to remove and easier to work with. 
and they're also um, cheaper and they don't damage your teeth like ceramic ones can. Um, here they are. It's stainless. You can see my final wire, you know, is a square-ish shaped wire. Um, you can see my brackets and all the little hooks where all my crazy rubber bands used to hook onto. And then even on the front, you could see that they had this twisted wire here, which was really a metal power chain, if you will, that sort of were to pull all my teeth together in the front to close any of the gaps. Um, that formed either from the orthodontist grinding down the teeth or just reshaping them so it's more aesthetically pleasing. So it is kind of gross. Um, <laughs> I did give this a real thorough cleaning. I also boiled it in hot water to make sure it was all sterilized. No one touches this except me anyways, but I thought you guys would find it really neat to see this. Um, on the back of the bracket, you can see that they're kind of this meshy type pattern on it. And that's just to give the bracket more surface area so that it would um, adhere to the surface of the tooth a little bit better. So wire. Um, in this case that I've got here, I've got two of these. This is like a contact solution travel case pouch thingy. I've got two of these and they are filled with a whole bunch of goodies. Uh, most of them, in fact, almost everything in this pouch is all the different rubber bands I've had to wear over the years. Um, I never threw them out because I always thought they were really neat. Um, it was an interesting discussion piece and it's also useful for crafts for my kids. But I actually have two pouches of these from varying strengths, 1.5 ounces right down to the hardcore 6 ounces. Um, one eighth inch microscopic elastics that were almost impossible to get over a hook, let alone stretch over my teeth from the top to the bottom to bring my bite together. Um, that was probably the most unpleasant experience because you're effectively wearing, I guess, what would the equivalent be? What's six times three or six times four? Like 24 ounces of pressure in your mouth, like 24 seven, pulling everything together pulling down, pulling back, pulling sideways to bring everything into proper alignment. And even though I was asked to wear my elastics eight to 12 hours a day, I was actually really good. And I wore them for like 18 to 22 hours a day because I wanted this treatment to end sooner. Um, and so my treatment ended up dragging out to be two years. Heaven forbid, if I didn't wear those rubber bands, I might be still in braces today because nothing would have moved. Um, but the point is, is that if you're gonna go through orthodontic treatment, folks, whether you're a teenager, a kid, or an adult, or a senior for that matter, um, you know, really stick with the treatment plan. Make sure you keep things really clean. Embrace your braces, if you will, right? And enjoy it for what it is. Um, I didn't mind wearing braces, actually. And, and I joked with my wife and said, if I ever had to get them for a fourth time, that it wouldn't be the end of the world. It'd make me look 10 years younger. Um, <clears throat> but joking aside, um, you want to make sure that you follow your orthodontist's instructions to a T. If he asks you to wear elastics, you know, for eight hours a day, make sure you stick to that or wear them longer if, if you if need be. Keep things super clean. Don't do stupid things with them. And if you follow those rules, you know, chances are you're going to have a great outcome and you're not going to have any issues, you know, down the road. Um, I tried to be on my best behavior. Um, I don't know why life has always dealt me the bad teeth card, but you know, I hope that I don't ever actually have to get braces ever again in my life because it's expensive and it's, well, it's a hassle, right? So uh, this is probably going to be my last video update on the subject of braces, unless you guys have a special request that you want me to talk about um, or to demonstrate. Uh, my spouse does have braces still. She went through double jaw surgery, so I can certainly talk about that for those that are wondering. Um, otherwise, this concludes the braces vlog series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. You know, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.